All right, this is gonna be the most complex front end to back end project of the year. Now, historically, for my students, this is their favorite project of the year. I think you're gonna learn a lot. I think you're gonna experience a lot. However, you're gonna do a lot of research. So let me get started. This is called the Doomsday Project. Now, this started because there was a TV show on for a little while called Doomsday Preppers. And these people, uh, for whatever reason, they fear like a sunspot or a zombie plague or something like that. And they start preparing for this into the world sort of scenario. And then there are these experts that look at all their preps, all the things that they've put in place to say how long they may survive. Now, that was kind of the inspiration for this project, but that is not where we're going with this project. Where we're going with this project has to do with the, the broad concept of self-sufficiency and sustainability. I'm going to say that again, self-sufficiency, because I read a lot of Thoreau, and sustainability, because it's an environmental science class. We're talking about sustainable future for mankind. So th there's actually a lot of overlap between the preppers and the people that are looking at sustainability, but this is where you're going to go. So first things first, mm -hmm. we're going to start with an assumed budget of $100,000. I'm not actually going to give you $100,000. So that, that's your assumed budget. And you're going to start with some state in the union that I assigned to you. Okay. I'm going to tell you what state you got to look up. What you're going to do with that state is find an actual property for sale in that state at the time. And you're going to link that into your project, into your, uh, either use Google slides. I really don't like PowerPoint. Let's go with Google slides on this. So that's going to be your first thing is a property that is for sale right now in that state. And that's going to come out of your budget, an actual place. Then the next thing is when you're going to start applying knowledge. First thing, you're going to need to know the biome, climate, and soils. So we've been over biomes at the beginning of the year. We went over climate. We've gone over climate issues. We've gone over soils and everything about soils. And there's tons of YouTube videos and everything based on that. So you're going to gather all of that in your head and on the property with that budget. And then we're going to start building. So why you need to know all that is because you're going to go through all the agricultural techniques that I taught you, and you're going to use those agricultural techniques, such as vertical farming or uh, half a dozen others, a crop rotation, a green manure, and all of that. You're going to have your own agricultural plan to grow your food for the sustainable future. Seasons. You're going to need to grow crops three out of four seasons. Those of you, who have, if I give you Alaska, obviously the winter, you're not going to grow much. If I give you, you know, somewhere in South Texas, so, you know, or Arizona or Nevada or something like that, then summertime is going to be rough. So you're going to need to grow crops three out of four seasons. Okay. Now you need a home to live in. So you've got soils, you've got climate, you've got biomes, everything else. You've got an agricultural plan. Now you need a house. So what I want you to do is use all the alternative home building methods that were in this unit, unit six, and the alternative home building project. So uh, those 15 different pieces of research that I did for you, uh, for you to learn all those things, you're going to use that library of information in order to build your own home. The point of these homes, energy efficiency. Okay. So uh, I'm going to get to electricity generation in a minute, but the way to save electricity is to have the most efficient home possible. And that is just a general concept for the future of mankind, that regardless of whatever energy production method mankind goes with, with it all of them, or if it's all in with a few of them, then either way, we need to save power. And that is going to be things like microgrids and energy efficient homes and things like that. Now, we're going to continue to go. We're not, we're not done yet. So your residence that you build, you've got a farm, you've got a home, okay? Now we need residential power generation. Don't say that you're going to use uh, a, pardon me, a five megawatt windmill. You can't afford one, okay? <laughs> Not on a $100,000 budget anyway. So you're looking at residential power generation, residential power generation. And you're going to use websites like mm, wholesalesolar.com, there's a few others, that sell residential windmills, residential uh, uh, solar panels and water wheels and all sort of other things, these small uh, 
power generation concept for residential areas. Now, if you look into the old goal, new ideas, the new tech piece for unit six, there is a huge library of these smaller energy producing technologies for you to look at while you're doing this project. So a lot of the information is already pulled, already there. It's a library of information, but you need to do the research for yourself. Now, reduce, reuse, recycle. We're gonna look into residential waste disposal, particularly recycling, okay? So there is gonna be some waste disposal in terms of things like feces and things like that, but there also needs to be a great deal of recycling. So you're gonna find a way to reuse human waste, agricultural waste, animal waste, etc. We're not done yet, okay? So then the next we're gonna look into residential forms of communication. So that's gonna be every, anything from, uh, I mean, ham radio, that sort of thing, residential forms of communication. Because in the sustainable future, maybe not everybody has an iPhone 10, right? And there's giant cell towers that are powered by unbelievable amounts of electricity and so on. So we're gonna look at the residential off-grid, if you want to call it that, forms of communication that are available. Defense. Residential forms of defense. How are you going to fortify this place, this home, this farm? You know, good fences make good neighbors, right? So how are you going to defend your new sustainable off-grid farm? And then finally, trade, okay? So you need an economy. You need something to barter to trade let's assume that we don't know the future of the american currency we don't know the future of the country much less the the currency or exchange rates etc cetera, etc cetera. whether it's paper money or gold money or whether you're even allowed to own gold i'll let you look into the america's history with the gold ownership and things like that on your own but what it comes down to is goods and services can be traded for other goods and services so what is your goods and services going to be I want you to think about your talents, your skills, your interests, and the raw materials that you have in this location. Look at the soils. Look at the climate. Look at what you can grow. Can you grow in excess and trade those things? Can you mine for gold in this location that you're at? Well, that's what I want you to know about. Because it's all, because I told you this in, earlier in Unit 6, that all economy comes back to natural resources. All of it comes back to natural resources. So what I want you to do is look at the natural resources that you have found on this property and figure out what economy can be spurred from those natural resources. And you're gonna put all of it together, the home building, electricity, waste disposal, recycling, agriculture, all of it in a totally real life scenario on a budget that's half what the houses across the street are worth, okay? That's the Doomsday Project. Have fun.